Hey guys, welcome back to another episode in this series and we're just going to jump straight into it. Uh, in this episode, I'm just going to start to come up with the new website design for the project that we're working on. And I'll kind of show you what I do um, in terms of like looking for inspirations and also some important things to take note on, um, especially when you look at a website and you're kind of determining whether the website will do well or not. And then also at the same time, show you the process of how I start from, you know, idealization, coming up with the idea for a site and then building the site out and then finally like launching the site. So it's going to be very free flow for, so just to uh, have a disclaimer, I'm not a designer, like I'm not a great designer. And so I won't have the process that, you know, you see a lot of designers have, which is, you know, they come up with like different mock-ups and things like that. For me, I'm working on this project because it's for a friend and, you know, I want it to be as efficient as much as possible. And because I don't have kind of like stakeholders or clients that I you know, having to report to because I know that web design is one of the things that takes a lot of time. You know, the back and forth, these minor changes in this and that. So I'm just going to show you the important elements of getting a good enough website out there that can help you to get more leads and make more money. All right. So let's get started, shall we? And again, everything is going to be free flow here. And yeah, I'm just going to explain my thoughts along the way. And if you like videos like this, please remember to click the like button. And yeah, let's get started. So I'm going to start off, usually how I'm going to start off is I'm going to look at a site architecture and kind of decide like what type of pages mm -hmm. we want to have. So when I mean type of pages, there's a few, you know, type of pages. There are services type pages. Mm -hmm. So pages that is supposed to convert, right? And usually these are, well, I wouldn't call these landing pages. Usually these are more commercial pages. I would say, right? Commercial pages. And these pages are basically your lead pages, right? Where you're selling something, right? This page, it's meant for selling something, well, mainly your services page, right? And then there are also going to be informational type of pages. These are all educational based, right? So when I look at a website, I'm thinking about what are some of the pages that, what are some of the type of pages that I need to create? Because this usually means that this usually gives me an idea of how many templates I need to have. So when you look at a website like this, for example, right, there are, there is, let's say 18 pages, right? You don't actually need to create 18 pages. Mm -hmm. Well, technically you do, but you don't actually need 18 designs because some of the pages follow the same design. And usually this belongs to the same type of pages. So for example, these pages here, where we are selling the actual services itself, all this page is going to have the same kind of design formatting and element. And that's why like, I don't need to create so many different pages. I just need to create one template and then this template can be used for all of the, the service page that I will have, right? So yeah, the first thing that I'll do is I'll just take a look at what are the type of pages I need to create. So I will need to create definitely a home page. Yeah, so a home page is kind of like a, a, a page on its own. So we definitely want to, and then under the, yeah, about us is also going to be another type of page. Testimonials, I'm not sure if I want to have it because I can put all the testimonials mm -hmm. under about if I want to. But for now, let's just, let's just include it in here. Testimonials. And then we have service category page. Okay, service category page is basically this one over here. So this is a category page. And then we have a individual service H, okay, which is all the services that we see here. And then finally, we have our resources. So guide category page, and then we have our individual guide page. Okay. And then we have a contact us. Okay. So, so there you go. Like from how many? 18. We actually only require one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight. Eight of these pages. Okay, so we need eight type of pages. And then that's, yeah, that's essentially what we need. So what I'm going to do, right, it's I'm going to not focus so much about the about us section, the testimonials. And I think contact us is also not really that important. Service category page. Maybe we want to 
focus on. So the reason why I, I'm not focusing so much on the about and the testimonials, right, is because I'm trying to show you guys from, from a standpoint of trying to rank for this pages, right? These pages is supposed to rank for a certain keyword. And for the about and testimonials, like we wouldn't be ranking for, there's no search demand for, you know, the brand plus testimonials or the brand plus reviews, at least not for now, because the current project that we're working on, the website doesn't have a lot of brand presence online. So I'm going to instead show you the top process and kind of like the, how to come up with, or what do we look out for when we are creating these type of pages instead. So like the individual service pages, okay, as well as the, probably like the individual guide page, okay, which is the individual blog post. So I'm going to show you this first, okay. Now I'm going to, I'm going to paste all of this in here first because page type and then, yeah, we are, and then I'm going to, why is this, we used to not underline it. Yeah, so I'm going to just paste all this in here first. Individual service page. All of this here, hang on a minute. I just want to, so when you are doing this, make sure to categorize them. And that's why having the site architecture is so important, you know, service category. And the reason why I set things up like that also at the same time is because it's going to be easy for us to scale. And what do I mean by that? So now, for example, these are the only services that we have. What about in the future, if you are going to come up with a new, new service page, right? So if you do come up with a new service page, then what you can do is just, you know, depending on what services we are coming up with, you can just, you know, know that this page type belongs to the new service, right? And then if it's a new blog post, they will know what, what page type to follow exactly. So yeah, this is how uh, I like to think about it, usually from a scaling perspective. And usually things get messy, especially when, you know, there's no organization where people are just adding in a random page and then do that over the course of six months, you'll realize that there's a lot of different pages different types of pages and it's just all over the place and there's no consistency in the brand. There's no consistency across the entire website. And when people look at a brand, when people look at a website, they get confused, right? So uh, that's just, this is just one attempt to make everything more organized. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus on these individual service pages. And most of the time, the way of how we look at a page, the process is kind of the same. Um, I'll walk you through some of the things that well, we need to take note on, but essentially they all they are all the same. It's basically looking at what do users want when they are searching for query. When they search for query, what do they want on a specific page? And then in what order do they want it in? Right. So a lot of this is based off on the users. So we're gonna do we're gonna do that. And then I'll also show you some important elements to have for let's say an informational type page or a individual service page. In this episode, I'm not sure if I can go through like the individual guide page or, or blog post page, but I will definitely show you the individual service pages. So the first thing that I like to do, right, is usually I already have an idea of what is important for a lead generation page like this, like the individual service page. And it's all because of, you know, I've been working on projects like this for quite some time now. So I really know some of the common elements that we'll need to have for a page that we want to get like leads and things like that. So yeah, the first thing that I want to do, it's basically look at some elements that we definitely want to have first. Okay. So on a service, on a page that you want to convert, you generally want to have some type of form. Okay. In this case, we want to have some kind of form on the specific page because we want people to convert. We also need to have some kind of social proof. Okay. Or like this can be like your testimonials, testimonials or social proof, social proof. Testimonial. So social proof can be in terms of like, you know, the number of reviews or, uh, or, you know, it can be authority or it can be experience, right? These are some of the things. And then we have testimonials here. Okay. And these are the elements. So when I look at a website, I usually like to break it down into like, kind of like Legos, if that makes sense. And thinking about how many blocks we'll need to have, how many pieces we'll need to have to finish this web page. And these are kind of the Legos that we need, right? So the elements, so we need a form, we need a page, a section to show social proof. We also need a page, sorry, a section to show testimonials. And then what I do is I go in and take a look at some inspirations from like different websites or different templates. Okay. So. Now I will 
basically go through it live with you. So the main cue that we want to go after is let's say, for example, it's funeral service, right? To a funeral service, okay? And then what we want to do is just, again, go into some of these examples here, okay? I think that's about it. And then we just want to take a look. And the, good, the thing about this is you don't have to take things that you don't, you don't like, right? Because what, what we're trying to do is we're trying to pick up elements of a web page that we think will do well. And also, you know, kind of picking out Lego blocks so that we can piece it in our own website, if that makes sense. So in this case, this is a, this is the kind of like the landing page they create, which is not really great. Like I, I probably can create another, another video about this, but this is not how you want to run a Google Ads campaign. Because this is not a landing page. This is just a page about, you know, it's all written words. There is no social proof. There is no call to action in the start. Yeah, this is just, yeah, you don't want to have a landing page like that. So again, from this site, I'm not seeing anything that is really helpful here. And again, I may be wrong. This could be converting really well for them. I'm not sure, but it's missing a lot of things that, you know, that you want in a landing page. So yeah, so in this case, what I'm trying to do, right, is I'm trying to pick out, again, elements. So when I look at the site, I'm looking at different sections. So this, it's a first section. This is a first fold. So what a first fold means is essentially whenever somebody lands on your site, what do they see without even scrolling? That's the first fold, right? So in this case, it's this entire thing here. Okay, so I'm looking at the first fold. I'm looking at what kind of things that they have. So this one is about the, the brand. And then they have different services here. Benefits or this here k okay. and then y so usb okay and later on if i were to take all this down right you'll notice that there's a there's a there's some commonality right so usually i do this just by looking at it but since i'm doing this video for you guys i'm gonna write it down so about the company okay so you can see this section about the company so we have the first four here first four okay and the first four, it's uh, it's all the benefits, right? Case trust. So you can see this is a social proof, transparent pricing. This is kind of like the benefits. Yeah, actually, this is a feature. And to to come up with all this, you have to really understand what is feature and benefits. Feature is kind of the exact offering that you offer, that you're offering to the customers. And then benefits, it's kind of like what can the feature do? So for example, this is transparent pricing. So let's say, for example, this is a feature, right? The benefits, it's, you know, customers don't have to worry about, never worry about hidden costs again, for example, right? That could be the benefit. Then this is the feature. So we really have to understand what is features and benefits. And also at the same time, like, yeah, so peace of mind, it's a, it's a, fee, uh, it's a benefit, right? It's not a feature, right? Yeah. And then the benefits. So they have a benefits. They have packages. Okay. I'm just going to list all of them down. So they have packages. Okay. And yeah, then we look at, so they have benefits. Okay. And then they have their unique selling point, which is the YR. Okay. And then facilities. Like I don't like this section here. I don't want to, I don't want to include this in here. Funeral resources. Okay. Resources or guides in a way. I also don't. Like this section here is not really important. And you see they have their reviews and testimonial. Okay. And then, yeah, this is, what is this? Okay. They have a FAQ. Okay. And so, yeah, so this, this is their FAQ. Okay. Which is, which is all right. But I still don't see a form. Like there is no form here. Okay. There is no form here where people can fill up. Okay. And then I'm going to, yeah. So this is irrelevant. And then we look, take a look at some of the examples here. So this first four, and when you are jotting all these elements down, when I'm jotting all these elements down, right, I'm seeing firstly, what is the most common things that, that appear? And secondly, are there anything that, are, are there any elements that I really personally like that I think will be beneficial for the users, right? So in this case, like there isn't, again, there's no, there's no form here. And then they have packages, right? Different packages, kind of like the YR. So you can see a lot of these elements are kind of the same, right? They have the, about the company, they have the different packages. Do they have? Yeah, so they have unique selling point, peace of mind, funeral resources. Yeah, funeral resources is kind of like the resource and guide. So you can see a lot of community here. Pro bono, okay. Testimonials, okay. And again, there's no form. And then this one, let's take a look. Yeah, there are different services, reviews, and that's it. So this is a really short website. And then let's continue. What is this? Oh, okay. So this is the packages as well. Yeah. So you can see a lot of them have the same kind of thing. And 
later on, I'll also like give you some ideas about like formatting, you know, like how to make the website not that chunky in a sense that like, you see all this text being together and testimony. So a lot of them have the same stuff, but a lot of them are missing out, missing out some important, important details. So what is this? Okay. So this is a, okay. This is a click to a 24 hours hotline. All right. So I'm already noticing some important stuff. Okay. Firstly, I, I think personally the competition, competition's website is actually quite low. Okay. Because there's a, like, I, I'm not sure why, maybe this is working in the industry. I'm not sure, but it does, it, it doesn't have all the common elements that will work well in a page that converts, you know? And secondly, what I've also noticed, right, it's, and it also makes sense. If you notice the call to action, a lot of them, it's not, it's not submitting forms. Yeah, it's not submitting forms and it's a lot about calling. So one thing for you guys to also take note at the same time, it's when you're working on a website, you have to know what is the most important conversion metric. We do, we do also want people to contact us via email in this case, right? We want, we do want people to submit form inquiries if that's what they want to do. But majority of the time, based on what I'm looking at this, it seems like a lot of people want to call up the business. And that is kind of like the main core conversion is calling up the business, right? Nonetheless, there'll be, there'll still be people emailing us to inquire about packages and stuff like that. But I think the main call to action from what I'm seeing here, and again, I'm not uh, the expert in, in funeral marketing because uh, every, every business, the beauty of this is every business is, is different. So yeah, it seems like a lot of them are through phone, right? Phone numbers, phone numbers, phone numbers, right? Call us, call us, call us. So our main call to action will be to call, right? Not form submission, even though we still want people to submit the forms. Okay, so this is a really helpful insight to have. And yeah, okay, so let me go in and take a look at some other stuff here. Okay, so we have taken a look at some of the local examples. What I want to do now is I want to take a look at some examples from overseas. And this is just a small habit that I have, right? Because usually when a brand is really big, chances are they have invested a lot of money into testing, into the website, into designing the site and I want to I want to see how how their website is set up one two three four five let me check out five okay so call yeah I don't need this number three like this pre-plan grief support FAQs testimonials okay okay let's plan the hits and flaws okay so nothing of the ordinary here yeah really nothing out of the, out of the ordinary here okay I think I think surprisingly this is quite straightforward, huh? Yeah. Surprisingly this is quite straightforward. So what we do want to promote for this call to action is definitely the call. The 24-7 call or slash consultation. Face-to-face -face consultation. Because that is the main key conversion uh, I want to have. So yeah, the competition the competition website is quite yeah, it's quite low. It's really quite low. Alright. And what we're doing now is we are looking at the home page. Right, because this homepage will ideally be ranking for funeral services. Okay, yeah, and then when we go back here, I can have two options here. I can have this ranking for funeral services. Okay, but I do not want to because I can either choose to have the homepage rank for funeral services, which is the main keyword, or I can have the category page ranking for funeral services. And I think I want the homepage to rank for funeral services. The reason why is because it's going to be, again, two to three steps down the road. I'm thinking most of the links that I'll be building will be to the homepage and the homepage will definitely get more link juice. And if I were to select this page to rank for the main keyword, which is funeral services, it means to say, you know, I have to build links to this page, which I cannot afford to have this page have more links than the homepage because it's very unnatural. And hence, I think in order for me to select which page to rank for for the main keyword, I'm going to select the homepage. So hopefully that makes sense. Yeah. So, okay. And then now what we want to do is we want to kind of take, take in more examples here. Okay. We're really doing researching at this point in time. So what we want is we want a, we definitely want a what, why us. We definitely want a call to action, right? Which is this. The call to action should be this. And then we, do we need a, about the company? I don't think we need a, about con the company. Resources and guy, I also don't think uh, we need that reviews and testimonies we're going to have it already faqs maybe not that much the different yeah the different packages or different services right uh individual services 
we definitely want this, the visual services, and also we want the benefits. Yeah, the benefits. Okay, benefits of working with this, with our, with our brand. So let's continue. So I'm going to set this back to local, actually, just to current region and go back in a row, services. Okay. And the next thing I, I like to do, right, is I like to look at the people also ask section. Because the people also ask section, it's um, an indication of what people are considering when they are looking for the main keyword that they have typed in. So let's say they type in funeral services. These are the most common things people who are in this journey. These questions are the ones that they have the most. Okay, so what is the most popular funeral service? What do you do at a funeral service? How much does a funeral cost and what is the cheapest? So they are cost aware. So they definitely want to know about cost. Okay. And again, we're just jotting all of this down, right? And you can see all of this is based off on what, what our potential customers are thinking about, right? So kind of interesting if you look at, look at it in this way, when you're looking at the questions that they ask, you're kind of getting to know them based off on the questions that they're asking, okay? So what are the most popular funeral services? Yeah, so uh, I have no idea like what, what, what do they mean by what are the most popular funeral services like brands what do you do at a funeral service so informational base they want to know like what do customers want to know they want to know the cost they want to know like cost you can see so I've expanded out a little bit but you can see the top four cheapest and how much does the funeral cost right so we definitely need to have some kind of pricing information there what do you do at a funeral service so they want to know what to do for them and for us right so what we're going to do and what are they going to do Right, so they want to know the procedure process for this. Okay, and then uh, I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna dive into the the rabbit hole here because I can keep expanding here. You can see I can keep expanding here, but I don't. I don't really want to, because I feel that you know having the top four questions is good enough. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to take a look at here. Okay, the related searches again is kind of like a hint on what your customers are looking for. So services in Chinese funeral, you know, uh, Buddhist. Uh, this is fine jobs okay so there's nothing really helpful here so it's fine then i want to take a look at here the autocomplete section list of funeral service price list packages yeah so you can see like they want to know the the price it seems like pricing is very much of a concern which which will make sense so what we definitely want to have is some kind of pricing there to let them know the the uh cost okay and yeah so these are some of the stuff that we want to have definitely for sure so yeah and then also at the same time, right, in terms of which Lego piece should go first and then which Lego piece should go second, it's also something that I think about because the flow of how customers want to consume the website, it's also quite important. So what do I mean? Let's say, for example, how do you determine whether, you know, the packages should come first or like the benefits should come first? Should we put packages on top of the website or should we put benefits first above the website, right? So how do we determine all of this? This is also something that I think about. And so, yeah, this depends on what type of pitch it is as well. So what I do want to know now, I, I mean, I have really have a lot of inspirations from here already. And these are the elements I've kind of collected. These are some of the elements that I may want to create because they don't have it on the, the website, on our competitor's website or the websites that we've researched. One more place that I like to look, it's kind of a, the templates, right? So I can look at, let's say, funeral home website templates. Okay. And then I can just go in and take a look at some funeral website examples. Now, I may not uh, be purchasing from them. And that depends because if I do find a, a template that I really mm -hmm. like, and the design is the design has all my elements that I want, and it's it looks really nice. And also at the same time, it's easy to set up because some templates is it's a mess to set up. Then I will consider you know just getting the template instead. However, ninety percent of the time I don't actually get templates. The reason why is because of number one, every time when you import a template in, right? There's you import in a lot of unnecessary assets as well. So you import in like images that you don't require. You import in like icons that you don't need and stuff like that. You import in pages that you are also not going to require, which means you need to go in and delete all these pages one by one. And also at the same time, if you were to do some edits, you can, but you will be editing within the confinements of the template. So I don't really like this. 
I like to be able to edit. I like I I like to have the ability or the freedom to edit every single every single thing that I want. If that makes sense, right? So I personally don't don't like take templates. I take inspirations from the template, right? And I do. I have worked on projects where you know the website was basically somebody purchased off the a template place like this, and then they import in the entire template, and then. You know, there's a lot of pages that's not required, a lot of forum ipsum pages that is live on the page that the owners don't know about, but it, the uh, algorithm is crawling all these pages. And uh, because they're crawling all these pages, all these pages are seemed as, you know, either duplicated pages or non-quality pages because all of them have the lorem ipsum text on them and caused, causing the website to bloat up. So there's a lot of things like that. Right, so that also one of the reasons why I don't like to, you know, just buy a template, import it and cut it a day. Yeah. But what I do want to do is I just want to go in and take a look at some elements. Again, we're scout I I'm scouting for elements here. Okay, so let's just go in and uh, take a look. So we can see their demos here. One, two, three. Let's just open this up. Yeah, some of the templates are really nice. It's just that on the back end, you know, if you just want a simple website and you're not going to do any kind of SEO. You are, yeah, actually, if you're not going to do any kind of SEO, right, that having a template like this works very well because you essentially are not, you're not going to worry about no matter how many pages you have, whether does the, the website takes very long to load, it doesn't matter because from an SEO perspective, yeah, you're not worried about all that. Yeah, so learn more, contact us. Okay, so this first four and then plan ahead, pre-plan. Okay, so this is a USB, okay, which is okay. This is kind of like their packages, right? Yeah, which is... Yes, schedule and then blog post, contact us. Yeah. So you can see this form, right? Yeah. So I think I'm going to have the form at the bottom of the page. And then the first call to action will be to call now immediately. And then start now, contact us. Yeah. How we work. Okay. So they have a, they have a process of like calling. Yeah. Yeah. Not so important this section here because I'm thinking, uh, and again, this is, this, this is the one of the reasons why it's so fun. Because every process will likely be different. For a business like a funeral service, right? It's most of the time, I don't think maybe pre-planning takes up a small amount of their customer base. But I believe a lot of their customer base will be based off on immediate. Like like something happened and then they are looking for it for the service immediately. And that's why call is very important. And so if a call is very important, I don't think having the process of showing them first step, call us, second step, what will happen, third step, what will happen. Because the sense of urgency is going to be a lot more, right? As opposed to, this will probably work better if, let's say, their main call to action is a lead form where they want to have lead form submission. They want to know the process is not as urgent, if that makes sense, right? Because when somebody submits a form, you know, before they submit a form, they want to know like, what's the, what's the process like? Whereas if somebody is calling for a funeral service, it's most likely they need the service almost immediately, right? So this process, I think, will be good for pre-planning. So if let's say we do have a service that is a pre-planning service, right? So pre-planning, it means to say nothing is happening yet. They have more time to look at the process before deciding whether they want to submit an inquiry for pre-planning. Then we will want to have this on a page, right? Yeah, so well, hopefully that makes sense. And then, yeah. Uh, let's see our projects. Now we don't need this. We also don't need to show the team. I don't think we need to on the homepage. Yeah, so that there, so there's not a lot of, so no examples here. Let's take a look at these are the ones that I just opened up. How about this one? Okay, explore demos. So uh, let's take a look. One, two, three. Okay, and let's see. Yeah, so it doesn't doesn't look like anything stands out to me. This is basically, yeah, nothing stands, stands, stands out to me. Provide all types of service. Yeah. A look at this so this is the uh, packages okay okay so they have a price list here and i think this pricing would i think i want i want something like this right if i do have the pricing here which i think we need to i want to have the pricing something like this because this is what customers are looking for they're looking for cost right small breakdown for cost okay so we're just expanding all this data elements out to see what is required. This is not that much important. So they don't sell products. We don't sell products, so it's not important. Not required. Yeah. Let's take a look at this example. Yeah, I'm going I'm going a little bit fast here because 
you can kind of see like some of the, I'm just trying to scope up or try to see things that are unique and useful. So this is flowers. Yeah, this is flower. Wait, did I? I think I saw all of this already. Okay. And then next up, let's just take a look at, let's just take a look at this few examples. Which ones has the most download? Not really a lot. Okay, let's see. Yeah, this is not really nice. Yeah, this is not very nice. We're here they are with you. Yeah, this is one is also very basic. We, actually, we just need a basic website, to be honest. We don't need the website to have like a lot of, you know, it, it's a funeral service, right? We are not going to have like rainbows and like gifts and all of that. And yeah, this is from the, uh, this is, yeah, this is an example from earlier. Yeah, so I think we have more or less what we want. So yeah, we have the first four. Yeah, so now I want to break things down a little bit more. So when we think about the layout for this kind of commercial page, right? The first thing is to give users exactly what they want. So when somebody searches for funeral service, they are really looking for, you know, to call somebody immediately. So within the first row, we want to definitely have a call to action. So this call to action, which is the call us, this should be the main call to action here. Okay. Yeah. The call to action, we need to have a call to action. We also want to have the, I think we just want to have maybe a little bit of social proof here and maybe some benefits. Okay. Yeah. I think we want to have some social proof. Social proof, we can have like been in the business for X amount of years or uh, experience in what type of funeral service, for example. Benefits can be, you know, the benefits of our main core offer, which is the first four here, right? So we definitely want to have that in the first four. And then the second thing that I want to have, right, it's not so much about, about the company. I don't think that's more important. I think reviews and testimonials should come later on or even the benefits. Yeah, and okay, so the, the one the one thing I'm trying to follow is what you call it, inverted, inverted, Pyramid of value. Uh, yeah, is it this one? Yeah, I'm trying to show you. Yeah, kind of like, I, I'm not sure if this is the, yeah, I forget which one, which one was it. But the main idea is, is, is the same. Like on your page, you want to give them the most important thing first. What do they want the most? And then you want to follow that up by what do they want kind of like in priority number two. And then supporting details after that, which is kind of like the nice to have information. So and the chart I have is, is kind of similar, but it's in another format. But yeah, this is what I'm trying to do here. For every type of page, this is what I, I try to do. So if you think about the, the page, the first one is they want to call. They want to have a reason to call the social benefits and the proof. Then the second thing that I maybe want to have, it's maybe the reviews. We can have the reviews or testimonials here. And then after that, we can have the different packages, you know, because they will be most likely looking for different packages. Or we can even have the packages first. And then reviews and testimonials after that. That is also fine. And then we can have the benefits. And then maybe about the company. And then why us? And I don't want to have resources or guides because I think that will make the page too long. So I don't think I want to have this. Reviews and testimonials. And then we can have a final call to action here. But this final call to action could be um, the lead form. We can have a lead form. Oh, we have to have. So we have a form here already. So, okay, initially I wanted to have a form, right? But after, you know, doing the research and stuff, you can see like how we pivot from having a form to having a call instead. We still will have a form probably at the bottom. But yeah, this is how, this is how we are going to kind of lay out the, the Legos, the bricks. So we have social proof here. We have testimonials, unique selling point. Yeah, packages and individual services. So we have, we need to have one place where we are reviewing the individual packages here yeah, and the cost, right? So I think we will have it here, which is the cost. Yeah. Okay. And then reviews, guys, testimonials, FAQ. Yeah. So cost breakdown. And then there's also one part here, what to do for them. What, what would the business do for them? And what would the business do? Sorry. What do the customers need to do? And what? will the business do to give them some clarity because early on from our research right, we found that the people who are looking for funeral service they want to know what's going to happen and what do they need to do right so i do want to have this because i feel that this is going to be unique and it's most likely going to be helpful for for customers to know exactly what to do yeah 
So hmm, again, we're trying to think from a standpoint, from a customer's point of view, what do they want, right? They, they are probably quite lost. Let's see. We can have, actually, we can have it in the, under the call to action, under the consultation phase. Yeah. So we're going to have it here. Here. Here, we're going to have steps like what is in the call, right? So we'll have like what they need to do here, what they, what to do for them and what they need to do and also explain what we will do. Yeah. Under kind of like the, the last place, last place, we have the call to action and basically explaining what's going to happen and explaining all that either via a phone call. I mean, we can, we can try, we can test this out for now. Yeah. So I'm going to delete all the rest. FAQ, I don't think I want to include FAQ yet unless the number of words required is going to be very long. Yeah. So, okay. One, one way of how I like to check things, right? It's I like to use Surfer SEO just to see if the, the page that I need to create, will I need to create a very long page, if that makes sense. Okay. So once I'm in here already, what I want to do, right, is I just want to look at the main keyword, funeral services. Okay. And then one thing always to make sure that you are trying to try to do your research around your target audience, your main target audience. So in this case, you can see I can select mobile or desktop and I want to know like which one should I select. The question you should be asking is where are your most of your customers? How are, your, how are most of your customers reaching you? So if you go to your Google search console, okay, and you can just see the, the performance here and just go to, let's say the devices. And you can see like impressions wise, most of them is coming from desktop and mobile. Actually, there isn't much of a difference here. Okay. But if you see like, it's a very big major difference. Let's say it's 80% is desktop, then 20% is mobile. This usually happens if you are a B2B brand. Okay. And you're selling B2B products. Then you know this like a big chunk of your customers are coming from desktop. Then you want to select desktop. But in this case, both of them seems like almost the same. Yeah. Well, in this case, I'm just going to go with the clicks because uh, it doesn't really matter that much. So I'm going to select mobile. But that's how you kind of like decide which one you should uh, select. Yeah. If you're not sure, just select mobile because uh, mobile usually has the most number of audience. So I'm just going to put this in here first because I want to see how long of a page we need to create. I want to see the number of words that is required. If it's, let's say, 3,000 plus words or 2,000 plus words, then we may need to have an FAQ section because the FAQ section is where we can put in um, a lot of content in a way. All right, so this is done. We're going to click in and see what does Surfer tell us. So first thing I'd like to do is always go to the customer section and just make sure that we're selecting competitors that are real competitors, right? So one, two, three, four, this is, yeah, five. Okay, I don't like to select a lot. I just like to select like four to five. Like for example, in this case, this is not the competitor you want to select. This is an aggregation of, of all the brands. Uh, I do not want, I want to compare apples to apples. So yeah, I don't need to select all of this. Um, and I just like to see if there's any outliers. So yeah, this has 2000 plus because it's a compilation of all the brands. This one also has 1000 plus, but it's a list. So these are the top fives that I want to basically look at. And if you can see that like, the number of words, this has 2000 plus words. 1,000 plus, and then there are some that is like 200 plus. And yeah, this has very little, uh, very little words here. So what I want to do, right, it's once you click, let's go, it will show you kind of like the average. So around 1,000 to 1,002, I don't think we need an FAQ because 1,000, I think we can manage 1,000 words with these elements, right? Under the cost, we can have words here. Under the benefits, we also can have words. Let me see what a type of, yeah, because all of these terms will definitely need to, we need to require all of these terms. Yeah, maybe we will have a FAQ, but maybe like three questions at most, but we'll see, right? Because now this 1000 is, is not really an indication that we should have an FAQ. If I'm seeing like, let's say 2000 plus words, then I know for sure we need the FAQ section. Because we will not want to, one thing to take note, you don't want to jeopardize your customer's experience from an SEO play, right? You don't want to have, you don't want to add in more words or add in unnecessary words uh, while risking the experience of the user, if that makes sense. Okay, you want to have a balance of both worlds. So yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll see. 
because the FAQ right now, I think this is optional. Yeah, FAQ, this is optional for now. So I think, yeah, now that we have, okay, so now that we have the elements, okay, we kind of know like in what order we want it to be, what are the important elements we want to have included. The next thing that we want to do is we want to come up with kind of like a mock, mock up design where we are just thinking of how to place the elements, whether like, for example, if the first four, whether are we going to have like an image on the right, text on the left, or image on the left, text on the right, or we want to have image in the middle or text in the middle and then call to action button in the middle, or we don't want to have image. So we're going to go through all of the elements and I'm going to kind of like build that out. I think I'm going to use Figma for this. And then we'll build it out in a in, a, in Figma. And then we'll see how it goes. Yeah, so that's probably like for the next episode. So with that being said, I hope you like the series. If you do, you know, please help me to press the like button. And if you feel that this is helpful, just leave a comment down and let me know which part, which part you think is interesting. And also at the same time, if you feel that somebody can benefit from this, share it with them. With that being said, if you're watching this, do this part of the video, you know, just press the subscribe button so you'll know when the next video will be coming out. And sometimes I go on live streams. So if you want to ask any kind of questions, if you want to be alerted whenever I go live, just hit the subscribe button and you'll be the first to know. So with that being said, that's all. Thank you so much for watching this video. Until then, stay safe, take care. Cheers.